Coming up today, President Park and Hay arrives in Washington for a four-day U.S. trip. She'll hold summit talks with her U.S. counterpart Barack Obama on Friday local time. Korea's main opposition party is seeking an alliance with other liberal parties and civic groups to fight the government's plan to bring back state history textbooks for secondary school students. First, piecing together the final moments of flight MH17. Dutch investigators say the plane was brought down by a Russian-made missile. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello, it's noon on Wednesday, the 14th of October. You're tuned in to our midday newscast here on Adidang TV. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this afternoon, Korea's main opposition parties joining forces with other liberal parties and civic groups to try and challenge the government's decision to revive a single state-authorized history textbook for middle and high school students from 2017. Moon Jae-in, chairman of the New Politics Alliance for Democracy, says the decision violates Article 31 of Korea's constitution, which says education should be politically neutral. The opposition leader says the Park administration should be focused on reviving the people's livelihoods, not on dividing the nation over ideological masses. In an attempt to halt the government's move, the MPAD says it will unite with the minor Justice Party and five-term lawmaker Chun jong Bae, who's expected to soon create a new Liberal Party. The ruling Senuri Party reiterated earlier today that the purpose of the government-issued textbook is to create distorted descriptions of Korea's modern history. President Park Geun-hye is now in Washington, D.C., ahead of Summit Talks Friday with her U.S. counterpart, Barack Obama. She will begin her official schedule on Wednesday local time. Our Hwang Sang-hee, who is traveling with the president, files this report. President Park arrived in Washington, D.C. on Tuesday local time. Topping the agenda for her four-day trip is her fourth summit with U.S. President Barack Obama set for Friday. The two leaders are expected to discuss bolstering their cooperation against North Korea's nuclear threats and provocations, as well as measures for a stronger alliance. To reaffirm their strong military ties, President Park will make a rare visit to the Pentagon, accompanied by South Korea's defense minister, Han ming gu President Park will visit the Pentagon to reaffirm the strong defense posture between South Korea and the U.S. While President Park's trip is largely focused on ensuring peace in Northeast Asia, there are economic aspects as well. The president is accompanied by South Korea's largest business delegation to date, and she will attend a number of business-related events, such as a roundtable with South Korean and American business leaders. We formed our largest ever business delegation with 166 people. It's significant that 84 percent of the delegation are representatives from small and mid-sized companies. President Park will begin her official schedule on Wednesday morning with a wreath-laying ceremony at the Korean War Veterans Memorial. She will then visit the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center to strengthen bilateral cooperation on space issues. Hwang sang Arirang News, Washington, D.C. South Korea's defense chief is also in Washington for talks with U.S. defense officials. One of Han ming main tasks is to convince the U.S. to sign off on the transfer of some key technologies required for Seoul's fighter jet project. Kim Hyun-bin reports. Defense Minister Han ming is expected to request a transfer of four rejected technologies considered crucial for the Korea fighter jet project when he meets with his U.S. counterpart, Ashton Carter, in Washington. Government sources in Seoul say Han will attempt to persuade the U.S. to reconsider the four rejected technology transfers as they are deemed critical to the KFX project. South Korea signed a deal last year to acquire 40 F-35A fifth-generation fighter jets with stealth capabilities from Lockheed Martin by 2021 to better guard against North Korean threats. The four technologies include the ASA multipurpose radar and RF jammers which are used to disrupt or prevent communication via a broadcasted RF signal, have never been transferred outside the U.S. The initial request was rejected by the U.S. State Department in April. 
During a parliamentary hearing in Seoul last week, Mr. Han acknowledged the need to re-request the tech transfer, and before his departure, he pledged to raise the issue during his U.S. visit. In August, Han wrote to his U.S. counterpart requesting help regarding the denial of core technologies, but received no reply. Outside of the KFX project, the South Korean defense chief is expected to discuss and share security information and establish a platform for the upcoming annual Korea-U.S. security consultative meeting in early November. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. Now, a recent opinion poll shows that more than 8 out of 10 Americans think the country's relations with South Korea are important. According to the survey conducted by the Chicago Council on Global Affairs on 2,000 Americans, 83 percent of respondents said relations with Seoul are important for the U.S. The survey also showed that two-thirds of Americans view South Korea as a reliable partner. 62 percent were in support of South Korea exerting strong leadership in world affairs. When asked about the use of U.S. forces to defend South Korea in the event of a North Korean attack, 47 percent of the respondents voiced their support, and that figure is the highest uh, it has been since the council began conducting the survey in the mid-1970s. Korea added nearly 350,000 new jobs in September as more people found work in the manufacturing and hospitality sectors on the back of stronger domestic demand. A report released by Statistics Korea on Wednesday shows around 26.3 million people were employed last month. That's up 347,000 from the same month last year. And this marks the largest on-year increase since May. The jobless rate stood at 3.2 percent in September. That's down from 3.4 percent in the previous previous month, but unchanged from a year earlier. Korea's youth unemployment rate edged down 0.1 percentage point on month to 7.9 percent in September. That's the lowest it's been all year. The sibling succession battle at Lotte Group, Korea's fifth largest conglomerate, has hit a new level. In a shareholders meeting in Tokyo on Wednesday, the elder brother uh, Shin Dongju was appointed CEO at the Japan-based Guang Yunsa Corporation, where his younger brother and Lotte Group chairman Shin Dongbin was dismissed from an executive position there. Guang Yunsa, an unlisted company, is the biggest shareholder of Lotte Holdings, which has control over the entire conglomerate. Following the meeting, the elder Shin successfully secured a part of his father Shin Gyok Ho shares in Guang uh, Yun Sa, uh, a move designed to help the older brother eventually own a majority stake. Lotte Group, however, says the results will not undermine Chairman Shin Dong Bin's control over the conglomerate, as a majority of Lotte shareholding support, uh, shareholders are supportive of him. Now, earlier we reported on China's trade figures and their ramifications for Korea, and the world's second biggest economy is turning away from so-called processing trade and pushing to expand its domestic supply of intermediary goods. But with these kind of goods accounting for the vast majority of Korea's exports to China, this could spell big trouble for Korea in the months and years to come. Kim Min-ji reports. Could Korea's already slowing exports head further downhill? The Bank of Korea says it's likely as China continues to move away from so-called processing trade. Processing trade refers to importing raw auxiliary materials and parts from overseas and re-exporting the finished product after manufacturing it. China used this model to achieve its startling economic growth since the 1970s, taking advantage of its cheap labor resources. However, China has been trying to shift its focus as it's not a value-creating model. Processing trade made up more than half of China's trade in 1998, but that figure had fallen to just under 33 percent as of last year. That's worrisome as Korea's exports to China are still mainly focused on intermediary products. As of the end of last year, 73 percent of Korea's exports to China were intermediary goods, while consumer goods accounted for a mere 7 percent. Until 2000, when China's trade rose by one percentage point, Korea's would rise about half a percentage point. But since 2012, the growth rate has halved. Not only is China contracting the size of its processing trade, it's expanding its domestic supply of intermediary goods, which will hurt Korean exporters. Korea's exports have been slumping since the start of the year. 
with more than a quarter of its outbound shipments heading to China. Experts say preemptive measures need to be taken in sectors where China is increasing domestic supply, such as machine parts and automobiles. They also say new export strategies need to be drawn up and put into practice. Kim min Arirang News. Now, the probe into the crash of Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 in eastern Ukraine has concluded the passenger jet was brought down by a Russian-made missile. The Dutch investigation team also said some of the doomed passengers could have been conscious for more than one minute after the missile struck. Son Jung-in has more. After 15 months of assembling wreckage from the downed plane, Dutch investigators have finally concluded that a Russian-made missile was to blame for last July's tragic incident. In its report released on Tuesday, the Dutch Safety Board presented the most feasible explanation for what brought Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 down over eastern Ukraine. It said that traces of explosives found on the wreckage matched a specific type of warhead, the box surface-to-air missile developed and made in Russia. Flight MH17 crashed as a result of the detonation of a warhead outside the aeroplane, above the left-hand side of the cockpit. The official added that as a result of the impact, the three pilots in the cockpit would have been killed instantly. He said that most, but probably not all of the remaining 295 people on board would have lost consciousness immediately after the missile struck due to structural damage and the plane's altitude. Russia continues to deny involvement, challenging the Dutch report with its own probe conducted by a state arms company that manufactures the missile system. The results of the experiment have entirely refuted the conclusions by the Dutch Commission about the type of the rocket and the place of the launch. Experts and Western governments believe pro-Russian rebels shot down the aircraft, possibly mistaking it for a Ukrainian military plane. With mixed conclusions from both sides, the case is expected to be taken to an international court. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. Now, a new audio clip from the Islamic State group reportedly calls for holy war against the United States and Russia. According to Reuters, a spokesman for the extremist group calls on young Muslims worldwide to start a holy war against Russians and Americans who, according to Islamic State, are waging a crusader's war against Muslims. Both countries are conducting their own separate campaigns against the IS group. Russia's defense ministry says Islamic State militants have suffered significant losses since Russia began its airstrikes over Syria late last month. It says Russian jets flew almost 90 sorties over Syria on Tuesday. Some members of the United Nations are again pushing for the most senior official responsible, whoever that may be, for North Korea's human rights violations to be referred to the International Criminal Court. Seoul-based Yonhap News Agency reports that South Korea, the US, Britain and Japan begun drafting a resolution last weekend. This follows the UN General Assembly's landmark resolution last year calling for the UN Security Council to refer North Korea's human rights abuses to the ICC. Yonhap reports the draft resolution will also include declarations for abductions, kidnappings and public executions. North Korea had slammed criticisms of its human rights protocols, calling them a US-led attempt to topple the regime. South Korean auto giant Hyundai Motor posted record monthly sales in Europe in September, driven by demand for its new Tucson SUV. Data released by the company shows that slightly over 50,500 cars were sold by, in, by Hyundai in Europe last month. And that is 5.4% higher than the same month last year, surpassing the 50,000 mark for the first time. The figure exceeds Hyundai's previous sales record of over 48,000 units in March. Now, the rise in sales was driven mostly by the increasing popularity of the Tucson, which went on sale in Europe in June. Hyundai sold over 9,000 units of the redesigned SUV last month, compared with 3,300 units in August. The Korean automaker also shifted over 10,000 units each of its i10 and i30 models. 
Korea's police force will begin street testing body cameras from next month. 100 cameras will be provided to uniformed frontline patrol and traffic officers. The small but visible cameras record auto, uh, audio and video and clearly indicate when they are doing so. They will be used during arrests, restraints and other dangerous situations. Now, their use is barred during routine street stops and organised rallies and protests. The National Police Agency says the cameras will help ensure both police and public safety. The trial will run until the end of the year, after which a decision will be made on whether to expand the programme. Well, that's all we have for now. I'm Mark Broom. Thank you, as always, for tuning in, and we'll be back throughout the day with more newscasts. Goodbye.